All right, this is chapter two homework for physics 101. It says the graph shows the motion of a car stop, stuck on stop and go traffic on the freeway. If you only knew how far the car had gone during this entire period, what would you think its velocity was? And what is the car's maximum velocity? So if you only knew how far it would go, then that means that you would think that it had traveled the same velocity the entire time. So for part A, that speed is just gonna be distance over the time. And you see that the car travels a distance of 90 meters in a time of 14 seconds. This is 14. So 90 meters over 14 seconds, which is 6.4 meters per second. Now in part B, what is the car's maximum velocity? The slope of a distance versus time graph is the velocity. So you want to find the point where you have the maximum slope. Looks to me like this line has the maximum slope. So I find the slope, delta y, is equal to 30 meters. See, 60 to 90 is 30 meters. And then delta x, I'm going to approximate it. It's about two seconds. All right, so my slope is equal to my velocity and that's 30 meters over two seconds which is 15 meters per second. Now this one up here, this value, is actually the average velocity um, and it just considers the distance over the time but the instantaneous velocity is the velocity at a particular instant. It's possible to shoot an arrow at a speed as high as 100 meters per second. If friction is neglected, how high would the arrow launch at this speed rise if it was shot straight up? And how long would the arrow be in the air? So we want to just first write down everything that we know. We know that the initial speed can be as high as 100 meters per second. So if I have this arrow, I shoot it up, it goes up, and then it comes back down. All right, um, I want to know how high it goes up, so I'll call this y, the distance y. And then I also want to know what is the time that it's in the air. So what is y, what is the time? I know that the acceleration due to gravity is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Again, I want to know y, I want to know t. I also know that the velocity at the top is equal to zero. So the arrow goes up, stops, it goes up, its speed decreases, goes to the top where its speed is zero, it turns around, comes back down where its speed increases. So the speed at the top is zero. The time at the top is equal to one half of the total time right, because the acceleration is the same in both directions. <coughs> My first step is going to be to find the time. And when you face questions like this where you don't have the time, that's almost always going to be the first thing that you need to find. And so in order to find the time, I say V at the top is equal to V naught plus the acceleration due to gravity times time at the top. So I say zero is equal to 100 meters per second plus minus 9.8 times t at the top. Then if I solve this for t, t is equal to minus 100 over minus 9.8. That gives me 10.2, but I just round it off to 10 seconds. So that's t at the top. That means that it requires 10 seconds to go from here to here. 10 seconds. That's part b. Now that I have that time, oh, so the total time then is equal to twice this value. So the total time that it's in the air is 20 seconds. So that's actually the answer to part B. Now, if I want to know how long, or excuse me, how high it goes, I want to calculate its y displacement. It's so y is equal to y naught plus v naught y t plus one half a y t squared. The acceleration 
and the initial velocity already in the y direction, so I don't really need these subscripts. Put in my values here, y naught is 0 meters plus 100 meters per second. And then the time. The time that I want to use is 10 seconds. Because I know that it takes 10 seconds to go from the bottom to the top. And so at 10 seconds, it's at the top. And that's the value that I want to know for y. Plus 1 half minus 9.8. So you get the negative in there, this is not going to work out correctly, times 10 seconds squared. That's equal to y. y is equal to 1,000 minus 4.9 times 100. That is 500 meters. That's five football fields that this arrow goes up in the air. You shoot it at 100 meters per second. A drag racer starts her car from rest and accelerates at 10 meters per second squared for a distance of 400 meters. How long did it take the race car to travel this distance? Let's just write down what we know. We know that A is equal to 10 meters per second squared. We know that um, X is a quarter mile or about 400 meters. Uh, that's actually 400 the uh, I'll assume that it has three significant figures, so I'll put a little decimal place there. V naught is equal to zero meters per second. Let me just go back in. So uh, here, I should have a decimal place. 400 dot, 400 point. That means that the four, the zero, and the zero are all significant. So it has three sig figs. All right, T is equal to what? I want to know that. And then I also want to know what is the final speed. This is very similar to the problem that we worked uh, where I had the Mini Coopers racing in class with the video clip. So how long did it take the race car to travel this distance for part A? Well, I like to write down my equations. Maybe up at the top. X is equal to X naught plus V naught T plus one half AT squared. And then V is equal to V naught plus AT. Now if I want to find out uh, how long it takes, I know x, and I know v naught, and I know a, so I can use this first equation to find t. So x is 400 meters, that's equal to x naught, which is just 0 meters, plus v naught, which is 0 meters per second, times t, plus 1 half a, which is 10.0 meters per second squared times t squared. So these two terms go away because they're both equal to zero. So I get a t is equal to the square root of 400 divided by five. And that's equal to 8.94 seconds. So the total time for the race is almost nine seconds. What is the speed of the race car at the end of the run? I want to know what is my final speed. V is equal to V naught plus AT. That's equal to zero plus 10 times 8.94 uh, seconds. So that's 89.4 meters per second squared. Let's see, that's pretty darn fast. That's uh, that's about 200 miles an hour, approximately 200 miles an hour. That's the answer. Truck covers 40 meters in 8.5 seconds while smoothing slowly down, by smoothly slowing down to a final speed of 2.8 meters per second. Find the truck's original speed and find its acceleration. So again, let's write down everything that we know. X is equal to 40.0 meters. T is 8.50 seconds. V naught is something I want to find. That's the initial speed. The speed when T is equal to zero. The final velocity is 2.80 meters per second. And then I also want to know what is the acceleration. The original speed and the acceleration. All right, so I have two equations. I have x, I'm just going to leave the x naught, it's equal to zero, I'll just leave it off, plus one half at squared 
and then I have this VF equals V naught plus AT. I want to know A and V naught. Now if I look at this first equation, I know X, I don't know V naught, and I don't know A. If I look at this one, I know VF, but I don't know V naught, and I don't know A. So in both equations, I have two unknowns. But I have two unknowns and two equations. So I can solve these uh, and substitute one into the other. So, um, first, I'm going to solve this equation for A. I'm going to say that A is equal to VF minus V naught over T. And then I'm going to plug this in wherever I have A over here. And so this reads x is equal to v naught t plus one half vf minus v naught over t times t squared. The t cancels, leaves a t right there. So now I can just plug in some numbers and find v naught. So x is 40.0 meters. I'm going to leave the units off just to make it easier. v naught 8.50 plus one half of uh, 2.80 minus V naught times 8.50. Okay, so that's uh, 40, 8.50 V naught plus 11.9, that's one half times 2.80 times 8.50 minus 4.25 V naught. That's one half times 8.5 times V naught. Then I combine terms the 8.5 and the negative 4.25 give me 4.25 so 40.0 minus 11.9 divided by 4.25 is equal to 4.25 divided by 4.25 V naught. So see, I have this uh, 40.0 minus 11.9 is equal to that, and then I divide both sides by 4.25 to get V naught, and V naught equals 6.61 meters per second. Now that I know what my initial speed is, I can take it and plug it in right here. So I get 2.80 minus 6.61 divided by 8.50. This is in meters per second. This is in seconds. So that gives me the correct units, which is meters per second squared, and it's 0.448 meters per second squared. So that's my second answer. This is my initial speed. This is my acceleration. And notice that the acceleration is negative because the uh, the speed is positive, but it's slowing down, so the acceleration is negative. This graph represents the motion of a particle. What is the particle's instantaneous velocity at t equals 4 seconds? So we want to know the instantaneous velocity at this point. In order to find that, we just find the, uh, the slope. So for part A, we just want to know the slope. You draw a tangent line. Let's see, I'm going to draw a tangent line that goes through that point. Looks like that. Uh, that's a pretty good tangent line. That's decent. And then I do rise over run. My run is going from 3 to 5. That's 5 minus 3 is equal to 2. And then my rise, it's going from negative 4 to 3, so that's 7. So my slope is my change in my x over my change in my t. That's delta y over delta x, rise over run. 7 meters over 2 seconds is uh, 3.5 meters per second. And in part b, what is the particle's instantaneous velocity at t equal 2 seconds? That's at this point. My tangent line looks like this. So that slope, it's a flat line, so the slope equals 0. So my v is also equal to 0. And then in part c, what is the average velocity between t equals 0 and 6? v average is just delta x over delta t. And we're looking between 0 and 6. 
So my x final up here is 4 minus my x initial right here, which is negative 1 meters, divided by my t, which is 6 minus 0 seconds. So that's 5 over 6 meters per second, which if you want to put this in decimal form is 0.83 meters per second. To find the instantaneous velocity in an x versus t graph, you take the slope. To find the average velocity, you just take the change in the distance over the change in the time. And you don't worry about the slope. It doesn't matter how the velocity changes throughout the motion. You're just looking at the beginning and ending points and the time. Find the instantaneous velocities of the tennis player in this figure at 2, 5, 7, and 11 seconds. It's a very similar problem to number four. We just find the slope. <clears throat> we first want to find it at two seconds. So the velocity at t equal two seconds. t equal two seconds is right here. To find the slope, just draw a triangle. My run is four. My rise is 20. So this is equal to 20 meters over four seconds, five meters per second. Part B, at five seconds, that's right here, it's a flat line, so V is equal to zero. In part C, uh, at 11 seconds, or excuse me, at seven seconds, that's right here, I do rise over run again. Uh, let's see, I'll just do it right here. This is uh, 10, that's 30 minus 20 over 2. So V is 10 over 2, which is 5 meters per second. And then D uh, at 11 seconds right here. My rise is approximately 2. My, or excuse me, my run is approximately 2 seconds. I'm fudging just a little bit. And then my, uh, my rise right here is negative 20. So my speed at t equal 11 seconds is negative 20 meters over 2 seconds or minus 10 meters per second. The following graph describes the motion of a particle. What is the particle's acceleration between t equals 0 and 30 seconds? So for part A, I want to know the acceleration between 0 and 30 seconds. Assuming this just means like the average acceleration. I really should have said this had average here. All right, but you assume that because you're looking at a range of time. And the average acceleration is just delta V over delta T. So my delta V here is, uh, excuse me, my V final here is zero meters per second. And my V initial here is zero meters per second over my time, which is 30 seconds. So my average acceleration is zero meters per second squared. All right. Just concerned with the beginning and the ending velocities. Then in part B, I want to know what is the acceleration between 30 and 40. That's between here and here. All right. A similar thing. A is delta V over delta T. That is uh, my V final is negative 40 minus my V initial negative 30 divided by my time which is 10 that gives me uh, negative 40 plus 30 is negative 10 over 10 which is minus 1 meters per second squared now in part C it says uh, what distance does the particle travel between t equals 0 and 30 seconds. If I want to find the distance 
the velocity versus time graph, the acceleration is given by the slope. But the distance that the particle travels is given by the area. If you think about it, distance, if you just look at it dimensionally, is equal to speed times time. Meters per second times second will give you meters. So I just want to calculate the area over the time frame listed, which is between 0 and 30 seconds. So I want to know the area. I want to calculate this area, this area, and this area, and that will give me the total distance covered. So I have two triangles and a rectangle. The area of a triangle is one half base times height. So my total area is one half base times height plus length times width plus one half base times height for those three separate shapes. For the first shape, you see it's one half. My base is uh, 10. One half of 10 times my height, which is 60. One half of 10 times 60 plus my rectangle is 5 by 60 plus uh, one half base, which is uh, it's like 15 times 60, which is my height. If I add up all of these, I get 10,050 meters. All right, so in a velocity versus time graph, the area under the curve gives the distance covered. Now in part D, how far away from the starting point is the particle at t equal 55 seconds? All right, so I just want to calculate this distance because I've already have all the distance covered up to 30 seconds. What is the distance covered here and here? So from t equal 30 to 50 seconds, the car travels this amount. It's just I want to know the total area above the curve in this case, which is one half base times height plus one half base times height. So that's one half of 10 times 40 plus one half of 15 times 40. This distance is 10. That's 40. This is 15 and this is 40, all right? That gives me a value of 500 meters. But this distance is a negative distance because it's below the axis. So we're traveling this distance in a negative direction. Because you see your velocity is negative because it's below the x-axis. So if I want to know the total distance covered from, from the starting point to 55 seconds, I'm going to subtract those two numbers. So the total distance equals 1050 minus 500 meters is 550 meters. And that's the answer. All right, this photo shows Apollo 16 astronaut John Young jumping up on the moon and saluting at the top of his jump. Video footage of the jump shows him staying aloft for 1.45 seconds. Gravity on the moon is one sixth as strong uh, as the Earth compute the height of the jump. I don't know the initial speed either. I'll have to find that out. Okay, so uh, the acceleration due to gravity is one sixth that of the Earth. So the acceleration due to gravity is uh, 9.8 over 6. Usually when I write it as g, Actually, we're not really quite here yet. So let me just write this as A, and it's going to be a negative value. Negative 9.8 over 6 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration due to gravity on the moon. It's in the negative direction. Now, my first thing, I need to find out what is the initial velocity. Vf is equal to V0 plus AT. Uh, Vf is 0. At the top of his trajectory, Vf equals 0, because he comes to a stop. Equals V0 plus minus 9.8 over 6 times t, or excuse me, times 1.45. And then if I solve that for v naught, I find that v naught is equal to 2.37 meters per second. Then I really want to know what is the distance. So y is equal to v naught t plus 1 half a 
t squared is equal to 2.37 meters per second times t, 1.45 seconds, plus 1 half minus 9.8 over 6 times 1.45 seconds squared. And then putting those in, he jumped 1.72 meters. It's almost six feet. That's actually a pretty big jump. Pretty impressive.